Today's video is all about the Xpedo APX Pro Direct Drive Smart Trainer. I cover all the technical specifications and then I dive into the ride and data review. This trainer is not a new unit for 2021. It's been available for quite some time now, but there are very few reviews of it online. So when Xpedo reached out a few weeks back, I accepted their offer to send one to the Llama Lab for review. If you haven't heard of Xpedo, they are the performance arm of Taiwanese manufacturer Wellgo, who you might know for their pedals. Now I believe these smart trainers are their first technical product. Now I say smart trainers because there are two of these. There's the APX Comp and the APX Pro. The Comp being their mid-range and the Pro being the flagship direct drive trainer. It's the Pro that I've had in the Llama Lab this week, so let's get into the details. Kicking off with the technical specifications, it's a direct drive interactive smart trainer. The compatibility is quick release 130, 135, through axle 142 and 148 straight out of the box. So no adapters or conversion kits are required. This works with pretty much anything out there. It's also height adjustable from 700C through to 24 inch wheels. Comes with a Shimano Hyperglide compatible free hub. No cassette is supplied. No pivoting rear axle. So no compatibility with things like the Elite Riser that go up and down on the front. Wireless, you'll get Ant Plus, Ant Plus FEC, Bluetooth and Bluetooth FTMS. The data you'll get over those will be power, cadence and speed, power ranges from 0 through to 2000 watts, power accuracy claimed within plus or minus 2%. Calibration is none required. There's no spin down available for this trainer. Max gradient simulation 20%, flywheel size 7.9 kilograms, listed as 8 kilograms in a few places too, but close enough. Noise level quiet, source mains power, firmware upgradable, yes, and other features, it does tilt. They claim five degrees each side, and there are three manual resistance modes. So when it's connected to power, but no controlling smart trainer software, you can press a button on the back to give you one, two, or three levels of resistance. I think that is a unique offering for this trainer. I don't recall any other trainers having a button on them to press to give you manual resistance. Price-wise, coming in at US 10.99 or 9.99 euros. Now this puts this in the upper price brackets of smart trainers. Speeding through the unboxing process, which is very straightforward. Comes with everything that you need in the box, and it comes well packaged. We have the trainer itself, the APX Pro. We have the manual. Everything required to mount any type of a bike. We have a WizU World card, and we have the power adapter. Added bonus, we have a drink bottle. That's also a first. Actually, no, the Tax Neo bike comes with bottles as well. Height adjustment set for my road bike, 700C. Cassette on. And we're good to go. Switching over to the Llama Lab with this trainer installed on my bike and we have to load the WizU World application. It's not a urology app. This appears to be a 3D ride simulation game, but it is required to check the firmware on the trainer. So loading here, connecting to sensors, pairing everything. APX Pro, and we have notification there that the trainer is up to date. I do think this functionality would be better served with a standalone application utility rather than having to sign up for their 3D riding platform. One final step before getting on the bike, I loaded up Lightblue just to make sure this trainer was truly FTMS compatible. And as you can see here on the screen, it appears so. Okay, onto my ride experience observations with the APX Pro before we go right down the rabbit hole with the data. Uh, the ride feels stable. It's uh, slight movement side to side by design, similar to that of a Tax Neo range. It does seem to go to the left a little more than to the right, but just has a little flex in there that I don't mind whatsoever. Has a quiet operation. The free hub is virtually silent, so there's no need to pack the thing with grease to not wake up your neighbours if you're freewheeling indoors. One thing of note with this unit was the resistance levels just didn't feel quite at 100%. Even with the difficulty slider on Zwift set to 100%, it felt like it was always on 50. So through Titan's Grove, where you're changing gears quite a lot as the roller coaster rolls on, I could pretty much keep it in one gear and keep the same cadence and it really wasn't varying that resistance a lot. Now I tested that with both Ant Plus FEC and Bluetooth FTMS with the same results. So I'm not quite sure if this trainer does pack 100% punch that it should be. Now that could be just me, but it just wasn't changing through the gears like I have been with all other trainers that I've ridden through Titans Grove, and that has been quite a few. The erg mode stability is quite smooth, but not as smooth as other trainers. I'll dive into that with the data section in a moment. The cadence reported from the APX Pro was, well, a little inconsistent, extremely jumpy in my experience. The erg mode over and under ramp ups and ramp downs took around four to five seconds to adjust and stabilize. That's not uncommon, but it would be nice for those to be a little faster. 
Another observation at Verg mode is it doesn't quite hold the set point. It's usually under by a few watts. At 200 watts erg, it only averaged 198. At 250, it averaged 247. And at 300, it averaged 297. That's only a few watts under, but there's a lot more to it. I'll show that in the data sets in a moment. Sprinting on the APX Pro wasn't too bad. It provided a lot of resistance to push against. I didn't spin the unit out and the unit was relatively stable, noting there'll always be a bit of jump on an indoor trainer going this hard. The simulation mode gradient changes were a little laggy using AMP plus FEC, but to be honest, that's not too uncommon on Zwift with other smart trainers either. Before jumping over to my favorite website on the internet for the data review, just a quick overview of what I'm looking for when digging through these numbers. First up, is the trainer accurate within the trainer manufacturer's specifications? Is what's stamped on the box what's actually happening with the trainer? I do give some leeway for some edge cases. For example, high flywheel speeds and low flywheel speeds in ERG, which should never really be used. And where most trainers really fail to be accurate or even apply resistance at some of those areas, but it's always a handy test to know how the trainer performs. These data sets also reveal how well a trainer can hold erg mode with stability and also the correct set point. If you set a trainer to 300 watts, regardless of its accuracy, does it think it's holding 300 watts? Or does it go over and under? Or does it go a little, uh, you'll see in a moment what happens. And cadence, if the trainer reports that, is it accurate? Only two data sets to look into today, but there's a lot to unpack. So let's jump straight to it with the first Llama lab test performed with the APX Pro, the Powermax NGCO, and the Asioma Duos. Jumping straight to the steady state. Diving in here with no smoothing whatsoever and we can see the APX Pro is reporting a little under what I'm actually doing on the pedals and on the spider. So 221, 234, 237. Reporting a little under. And you can see that blue line there, if you look close enough, it's not quite consistent. It does jump around a little bit but there's no subsequent jump in power from the other power meters. Not as much as what the blue line is jumping. So straight through from here, you can see this little section here is holding 247, 245, 243, to consistently below 250. Now, with the set point being 250, the average should be 250. So if it jumps to 255, 245, 255, I'm okay. It's gonna like average in the middle. This doesn't, until just here. Uh, well, I'll let me dive in a little closer. It's gonna get a little ugly with uh, no smoothing. But the blue line, I'm not sure what's happening there. And it's jumping up to, 261 on the trainer, jumping back down, and then goes through another phase of being under the set point of 250. So I'm not quite sure what's happening there. Uh, and we can see the 247 average with 261 on the Powermax NGCO, 263 on the pedals. Those two power meters, close enough for me at the moment. The 247 is the fake set point. I'd trust the other meters over this one. So ergmo performance for the Llama lab test, not that great. Close, close, but not that great. Sprint, the uh, two power meters again, close enough for the short sprint that I do. The trainer was a little slower to pick up. Uh, that's pretty much normal for a smart trainer to be a little slower to pick up on the power. Again, the power being applied to the pedals and the crank is instant. Smart trainer takes a few seconds to jump in, doesn't hit the peak power. The two power meters, uh, 1207, 1213, very, very close. Peak power from the APX Pro, uh, 1095. So sort of chopping off the actual effort I was doing there. So a bit of a rocky start to life with the Llama lab test and the steady states. Into the overs and unders, these are quite rounded off or smooth. As I said, it takes four to five seconds for that trainer to really jump up and hit that set point. Relatively smooth in those zones, not quite correct with power though. Overall, it'll provide you a good workout. But if you're nitpicking those zones and you need to hold 450, there's no reason why you should be holding 481 or 477 for that short period through here. Hmm. Next up in the Llama Lab test is the flywheel speed test where I set the trainer to 225 watts erg for four and a half minutes and every 90 seconds I change the flywheel speed and keep everything else the same. So this doesn't perform too badly in this one. Starting off here with a slow flywheel speed of around 15 kilometers per hour and the trainer is reporting a little bit higher. So it thinks it's holding 225, which isn't too bad, but on the pedals, it's a little lower. That's not too bad, that performance there. Switching up to a little higher flywheel speed, I believe this is around 35 kilometers per hour flywheel speed, and the tides are turned. You can see there the trainer under reports, but what I'm doing on the pedals is a little higher. Still relatively smooth with that set point, but 
the accuracy changes just simply based on the gear that I'm in. And then all bets are off, big ring on the front, small ring on the back, and what happens here? It makes me push around 270 watts on the pedals and then slowly sort of drifts down, drifts under and comes good. That's not too bad. Most trainers completely fail this section right here. But it does indicate there needs to be more testing performed on, say, negative gradients where that flywheel is really spun up to check the accuracy for, say, sim racing. And note right at the end there where I switched from erg mode into sim mode and there was a positive gradient applied to the trainer, it thought I was doing 662 watts when I wasn't actually pedaling at all. Well, I was doing 132 watts according to the power meters on the bike. But something strange happens there when it switches from erg into sim and gives me some fake watts. Hmm. The final section of the Llama Lab test at this point in time is two small short hill jams that simulates just accelerations in a race, maybe a short sprint, nothing over 800 watts here. And the performance of the trainer is similar to that of how it performed for the all out sprint. A little laggy for the uptake in power and clipping off the top of the actual power I was doing. So jumping into this one here, which looks pretty neat between the 832 and 826 watts reported by the two power meters on the bike and only reporting a peak power of 736 on the trainer. And finally, just rolling along, cooling down. We'll jump into that data after the trainer had a pretty hard time during the Llama Lab test. 164, 158, 160. So that's not too bad for those lower zones with a lot of variability there in the ride. Quickly jumping to the cadence reported during that erg test and it's spikier than Glenn Plake's hairdo in his heyday. It was all over the shop. Now I'm pretty smooth on the pedals for the steady state section here. And smooth isn't what I would call what's being reported there from the trainer. However, as posted on Instagram this week, averages don't tell the stories. The averages from the Expedo APX Pro, 90.49, from the Power to Max, 90.74, and from the Asioma Duos, 91.61. So averages, it's fine, but the actual story is completely different. So there's definitely room for improvement there for the cadence reporting in both erg mode and sim mode for this trainer. Now onto data set number two, where I set out to perform my 5x5 erg mode workout, and I pulled the pin after three because of the performance of this trainer. So this was pretty much me after my third interval there. Starting off with a slow ramp into a sprint to see how things perform there. Again, just validating yesterday's results on this. And again, the two power meters on the bike, very, very close. 1255, 1251, that is phenomenally close. The peak power coming from the Expedo APX Pro was only 997. Didn't crack the 1000 from the trainer. Hmm, not quite there. A closer look at the first two five minute intervals and I'll stop short just before the dropout. I'm okay with dropouts like one or two every now and then, but if it's consistent dropouts, that's a problem. So I'll ignore that for now. And the uh, same as what we saw with the Llama Lab test, the erg mode set point, it was overshooting through the first minute or minute and a half here. So 264 with the set point was 255. What I was actually doing on the pedals was around 270, so it was inaccurate too. And then for some reason, the set point on the trainer drops down to below 255. So 252 here, dropping down, dropping down through here, 249, so it was reporting under. Then it ramps back up and then sort of dives back off the bottom there. Now on the pedals, pedaling on the bike, it was quite smooth, but whatever's happening internally to this trainer for the power reporting the set point was something different. Don't know, unexplained. 270, that was actually quite good. You can see that that's what I expect to see. The human variability is there. I'm not smooth, I'm not a motor, but I'm give or take, uh, what, 10 to 15 watts, and that's okay. But with the accuracy being inconsistent between 255 and 270, hmm, there's questions. Do we get answers to those questions in the 300 watt zone? No, we don't, but let's have a look a little further at what happens at the 300 watt zone. So at 300, under reporting, again, not quite smooth, not hitting the set point through here, and then touching on the set point, that section through here, that's what I expect for the whole five minutes, right through here. But then something happens and it changes to go down. And then at the end, we have a little bit of a surf, we go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down through here. So I don't know what's going on. Power wise, let's have a look at that just by selecting that. That's way off the scale now, but 297, so reporting three watts on average low. What I was actually doing on the pedals, 316 and 314. Close enough for me, and close enough to push me over the edge for my five minute intervals that I actually pulled the pin. But not before doing a short, hard hill jam again, giving this trainer every opportunity to prove itself, and it proved it was consistent to yesterday's results as well. A little slow in the ramp up and a little under when going for that short, hard hill jam. Again, this is unsmooth data, so it looks quite raw, but 470, 494, 489, being robbed a few watts there by this trainer. 
and quickly looking at the cadence from data set number two, and old mate Glenn Plake makes an appearance again, being very spiky on top from this trainer. Given the performance of those two rides on that smart trainer, I chose not to continue testing this any further. If I was to continue testing, I'd do a thermal drift test, so that would be riding up Alp de Zwift, or a very long, hard erg session to see if the power separates as things get hotter, and I'd do a Zwift race or two to really stress this unit in sim mode. But to be honest, I didn't need any more excuses to find anything further with this unit. Uh, I've already come across enough that needs to be addressed before I go down that rabbit hole. On to the pros and cons of this trainer, and there were a few of both. The pros, it's a well-built unit. It feels solid, it's stable, the handle is great for moving, and the ride feel is quite good on the pedals. It's relatively quiet, and it has next to no free hub noise, so that's a bonus. You don't need to pack this thing with grease to quieten it down. Onto the cons, which is pretty much a summary of the data set that we've already seen. So the erg mode performance wasn't quite hitting that set point and was reporting a little differently throughout steady state. Steady state should be steady, not doing what it did. Power accuracy doesn't appear to be within the plus or minus 2% as per manufacturer spec. Cadence reporting, we saw the data there. And overall, I think the price and performance is a tough one for this one. There are alternative options out there, such as the Elite Dorado XR or the XRT and the Wahoo Kicker Core, which are at a cheaper price and outperform this smart trainer. And finally, onto my conclusions of this trainer. The build quality of the APX Pro is really, really good. It's solid, it is sturdy, it has a good ride feel, but this is not unexpected from a company that's been making hardware for years and years. It's the smart side of things, I think, that lets them down a little bit for this one. Measuring power accuracy isn't an easy task. However, indoors, where a lot of the variables are controlled, should be a lot easier than outdoors. If the APX Pro was positioned at a lot lower price point and the specifications matched my observations, it would be in a much better position in the market. Okay, there we are for today. Thanks for watching this one. As always, give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and hit subscribe to support this channel. It's much appreciated. We'll see you soon.